this is why we do this. Sun's just rising. It's uh, 10 to 7 on Wednesday morning, day three of the trip. Sun's just rising over the wild Ra Rewa or Rawa wilderness, however you say it, just beautiful. Slowly packing down camp. I want to be out of here about eight o'clock. Get to the next next campsite at Twin Crater Lakes. I'm hoping sometime in the afternoon. But I thought I'd just share this first. Camera doesn't do it, it just is obviously. But it gives you a flavor. Sunrise over the Rewa wilderness, just beautiful. Didn't sleep great last night. Mm. This campsite's a bit slopey, so you can never quite get comfy. Um, but got enough sleep, so trying to get off at uh, eight o'clock this morning. My campground's slowly being broken down. So, um, yeah. Anyway, back to it. First coffee as well, and then some breakfast. Back to it, let's get going. Coming out of Camp Lake, a lot of blowdowns, but the uh, trail maintenance guys have done a great job. Um, you don't have to hardly tr step over anything. Well done guys, thank you. Thank you for all the hard work. Navigation's pretty straightforward. Um, just after crossing this little brook, uh, stream, you head off up that way. And how do I know that? Number one, the map I've got with me, but number two, there's a sign and I'm following trail 972. So I'm not going to film me coming across um, streams and boulders and logs and stuff. A lot of people do that. I just look very ungainly coming across. Nervous, I think, is this word. So I'm not filming that. Okay, carrying on. Yeah, um, signposting is a lot better up here on this leg of the trail. I think on the uh, on the uh, Camp Lake Trail, the beginning, there was two signs that I saw, and actually you could have done with a lot more, especially when you approach the Camp Lake itself. But here, they look like relatively new signs. And just keep following your nose and following the arrows. Came up with a little bit of a incline in that last third of a mile. And uh, I was just practicing what I call targeted, targeting, targeted backpacking. In other words, when you're on inclines like that, especially at this elevation, pick a target in the distance, get there, take a breather, and do the same again. It's like running between lampposts. Keep going one at a time. So anyway, um, it flattens out a little bit until this base of uh, grassy pass then that's going to be a real goodly climb. So anyway, I'm going to take advantage of this flattened bit and, uh, and see if I can book a little faster pace. Yeah, it's mid, it's mid August and we still got snow up on those. I, I suppose they look like south facing slopes, but quite a bit of snow. We had a big snow the year this year anyway. So we're not going up there. That's that's not Grassy Pass. Grassy Pass is over over here somewhere. So anyway, um, okay, onwards and upwards. Came around the corner on the trail to this delightful little scene. I don't think this is Upper Sandbar Lake. I think that's a little farther. But it's a feeder lake up there, and I I believe I'm going to 
take a guess that little snowy bit up there might be the grassy pass that we're going to go over and it's probably a six seven hundred foot climb from here so yeah that's that's going to be a thing okay well i hear a river down here hopefully there's a bridge or something <laughs> so i don't fancy well i haven't waded yet but if i if i do i've got my crocs with me so okay onwards and upwards well that lake that river crossing wasn't too bad somebody had rolled some nice rocks in the middle uh, so yeah this time of year pretty easy to get across i'll well, come up to a sign here see what it says We just carry on the Upper Sandbar Lakes Trail, number 972-1. See that? Well, I just thought I'd check the map just in case. Correction, I don't want to follow 972.1. I want to just want to go up, up that away. Much as Upper Sandbar Lake is probably beautiful, I really don't have time to do it, it's another mile, so um, I really want to get to Twin Crater Lakes and uh, getting over Grassy Pass is going to be a push. So anyway, I'm heading up this way, up this straight ahead of me here, and uh, I think that's going to come out, I think that's going to come out up by up a, a Sandbar Lake anyway, so okie dokie, glad I've got a map. Colorado, true, Colorado truly is amazing. This trail's amazing too. You know, you just turn a corner and you're greeted with this. Just beautiful. Stop for a quick break. <clears throat> and a quick check, check of the map, because I don't think what I thought was Grassy Pass is Grassy Pass. Grassy Pass is up ahead of me and that's the other place is way to the uh, way to the west, way to the east. Sorry. So yeah, I'm on the I'm on the approach to Grassy Pass now. Um, but I'm just going to take a quick breather here. I'm not going to take my pack off, but I'm going to take a I'm going to camel up with uh, camel up with fluids and uh, yeah. So uh, probably, oh, I'm thinking about a mile to the top of Grassy Pass. The last like half a mile was a real butt kicker. So anyway, there'll be a lot of um, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of targeted uh, targeted backpacking going up there. Pick a target, aim for it, make it, take a breather, pick another target. That you know, that's why you you go pretty slow up in the mountains here. Well, I do anyway. Uh, okay, onwards and upwards. This is the trail that just keeps giving. It's a beautiful, beautiful. I came around this, so beautiful. I just came, came around this corner and wow. Beautiful day too. But it's only about 65, so it's great hiking weather. Just lost for words. Amazing. Top of Grassy Pass. It's a bit breezy up here, but it's all downhill from here. Just stunning, stunning. At 11,274 feet. This is the highest point on the trail. Both uh, my uh, iPhone and the Garmin concur. So it's all downhill from here, baby. Uh, hopefully, there's a sign for Grassy Pass. I'd like to photograph that. And so down Grassy Pass we go. Gravity is my friend. Since coming down off, um, 
grassy path and a bunch of switchbacks. This is the first real shade around here at the end of the switchbacks that I've found. So I'm going to camel up with water here. So I am just gagging. Uh, probably have something to eat as well. It is lunchtime right now. So, and then I've probably got another, I don't know, one and a half miles to where I turn off for Twin Crater Lakes. That was, that was hot up there. And uh, I really wanted to push over the pass and I have now, so that's cool. There wasn't a sign for Grassy Pass. I was kind of disappointed. But I did pass the highest point. I think it was 11,273 feet, maybe 274. Um, and that was an achievement. And I was gasping for air up there. So finally reached the Twin Crater Lakes Trail, 962. And it's going uphill. I'm pretty knackered, but I'm going to give it a, my best shot. It's... Uh, Quarter past two, it might take me might take me an hour and three quarters to get up there. We'll see how it goes. Maybe there's some switchbacks. Okie dokie, wish me luck. Well, I wanted to go up to Twin Crater Lakes um, and check it out. But honestly, I'm beat getting over Grassy Pass really <clears throat> took it out of me so uh, and that's 600 600 feet in a mile and I really don't want to do that so I'm going to go farther down the trail here see if I can find uh, an established campsite next to the uh, next to the stream and uh, camp there for the night and then I've just got four miles out in the morning you know sometimes you got to be discretion is the better part of valor I ain't getting any younger so, um, yeah, another time. I think this is part of the Lar Laramie River complex. So, probably got to go and cross this farther down, but these falls are beautiful, so I just, just thought I'd video them for you. Um, Found this campsite, not the bestest campsite the world in the world, but it's flat. So I'm gonna get a nice nice sleep tonight, I think. Bit buggy, but I've got my bug spray on, so they kind of stand, not biting at least. I've got one meal left. Trail's right there, I'm right off the trail. <laughs> Actually looks like somebody's had a quite a party here. There's a fire pit back there and it used to be, I think where I'm camping used to be a fire pit, but anyway, um, yeah, you can hear the river in the background, I'm sure. Not very far, it's about 50 yards away, so I went and got a load of water. Guzzling down the load right now. And um, getting set for the night. I've got one meal left, plus a couple of cliff bars, so that should sort me for the morning. I can always have uh, some second breakfast on the way home or something i'm about um i'm about three and a half miles from the car park here i suppose i could have booked it but it's the trail's so bad and gnarly that um it probably would take me three hours and honestly i'm not sure i've got much gas left in me so um yeah this is it for the night um sometimes i say you just got to call it uh hastily put the tent up um yeah uh hunt on the trail wouldn't be proud of this tent set up when i'm exhausted so <laughs> i did make a mistake and not again not bringing the four season but hopefully i'll be a bit warmer tonight um um yeah so uh, especially on the flat i won't go rolling around all over the place so anyway okay well if nothing amazing or fantastic happens, this is it going to be for the night. I've got um, a dried meal. My, my dried meal tonight's an unusual one. Bipping bap with uh, rice. So, uh, I'm sorry. Bipping bip bap is rice. Crazy. Bipping bap with chicken. So, that's going to be interesting, huh? It's the only thing I've got. Other than that, oh, it's cliff bars. Um, but I'm saving those for the morning. 
Okay then. Good night everybody. Best time in the morning. Coffee's on the go. Getting ready for the day. Of course it's also the worst time because I had to get out of my sleeping bag. My nice warm sleeping bag. Slept really well last night. Um, level flat ground helps a, a lot. So, um, and uh, ready to get going this morning. I've got, <laughs> I, worked, I worked out my food and everything just to the, <clears throat> just to the right amount because I'm left with two, um, two cliff bars to have a breakfast. Oh, and a cup of coffee, of course. So uh, anyway, I'm packing down now. Hopefully get out of camp by 7.30. Um, we've got a little river crossing. You can probably hear the river down there. I think I'm going to cross it just in my crocs. Um, there's a few logs, but I'm not going to risk it. It's early in the morning. I don't want to be hurting myself. So my feet could do with a clean too. So um, anyway, uh, okay, I'll catch you when I'm on the trail. Waded across both rivers. Um, they're close enough that if you put your crocs on you can wade across both of them oh my god that feels so good on your feet oh I, I stood in one of the rivers just for like two minutes and just let that cold soak into them. my feet feel great now should have done it last night really but anyway um yeah so i've got about uh, two and a half miles maybe sorry two and a half hours maybe three uh, it's about four miles from where i am just depends on the on the trail conditions they're pretty gnarly right at the moment so if i get some nice smooth cruising spots i'll, I'll make up some time but at the moment i'm picking my way down it so okie dokie uh, see you along the trail trail conditions pretty good along this some of it's gnarly i, I think it's because they bring horses up there but oh my god it sure is even being a green tunnel it sure is beautiful just pine forests and mountain tops and just spectacular. I'm cruising along, so uh, it's had some challenges this trail, that's for sure. Going over that pass at 11,273 feet. Woo! This big boy was sweating and gasping too. But now I'm down at about uh, nine and a half thousand feet, so it feels <laughs> a bit more comfortable walking. So. Not seeing anybody on the trail this morning. You do get some trail runners. Do you believe people run this trail? I'm sure they do it really fast. Um, uh, Occasionally coming up here. Not seeing any horses. I've seen plenty of horse footprint, horse tracks, but uh, and of course plenty of horse droppings, but not actually seen any horses. So okay, carrying on, carrying on. So I'm at the intersection with the Raywa Trail and the West Branch Trail. So according to my map, I've got like 3.5 miles left to the car park. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, just saying, a couple of things that have worked on this trip, a couple of things that haven't. A um, couple of things that have worked have been my Trekology Z trekking poles. Oh my God, they are so good for the money you pay for them. They have a foldable trekking pole like Leckies. They're aluminum. They're a little bit heavier, but man, they're tough little, tough little cookies. Um, another thing that's worked um, is my dust gaiters. They work great, and this trail is pretty dusty. Um, I'm using my old Merrells. Um, they're the waterproof kind, but um, you know, I've got to buy some more. They're getting a bit wore out. Um, uh, backpack. Yeah, I've been it's been rubbing on my shoulder a bit. I've got to sort that out and some of the straps came loose So got to sort that out too. Maybe it's just the way I've been doing them um, and uh, Tent big fail Brought the three season. It was a gamble right at the end 
shouldn't have done that i've said about it a couple of times now should have stuck to the four season in fact i think it will be if i'm doing any hiking on up country here that will be my go-to a four season in a um because i was pulling on clothes taking off clothes trying to get comfortable another beautiful day i've been fantastically lucky with the weather had a little spot of rain last night but eh, nothing really that much so um oh another fail bought too much fishing tackle should have kept it down to a couple of bubble floats and some flies yeah i got spinners i got all sorts of stuff but yeah that's all extra weight right anyway i'm gonna have a quick drink here and i'm gonna carry on carrying on i think she's a wader better get the crocs on stop this is what it is part of wilderness adventures if everything had a bridge on it it'd be too easy this is probably a mistake anyway oh yay yes I bet there's a ton of crap down there. Oh my god. She didn't rod out. This is where trekking poles really come in handy. You just stabilize yourself. You step over this. Yes. Look at that. Just feel good though on the feet. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just gonna stand here for a second. Beautiful, eh? Gorgeous spot. I don't mind taking a few more minutes of my journey on. Getting along. Oh, and there's a convenient little tree up there. I can park my butt, change back into my socks. Nice, whoever put that there. <laughs> okay, catch you in a minute. Um, while we're on the subject, well, we will just bring back the subject. The two things that worked out great. First one, and I should have set, made this first on the list, is my Garmin inReach. Oh my God, so good. Especially if you're doing a solo trip like me, keeping loved ones posted. You know, a lot of concerned people, me doing this trip. And uh, so keeping them posted of where you were, what your plans were, everything else it's invaluable easy to hook up on your phone as well so another thing was to keep it all charged the phone and everything else i bought a brand new anchor 10,000 milliamp hour um uh, power uh, battery pack and that worked great i recharged the phone about three times and the garmin inreach probably twice um, now it's brand new of course and they wear down but uh, hey you know can't beat that for the price I think it's like $28 <laughs> so um, oh yeah and definitely bring some bug wipes on this in this trip 
plenty of skeeters and plenty of nasty bitey things so yeah anyway okay well i see a little bit of a uh, targeted uh, backpacking coming up so i've got to go uphill you wouldn't th think it i don't know so but uh so i'm going to leave you now and carry on with it and this is where i started four days ago going up camp lake trail and my little adventure along the Rawa, Rewa Wilderness Loop. I'm going to say Rewa. Could be Rawa, but I'm going to say Rewa. Sounds, sounds kind of posh, but anyway. So yeah, I've only got two and a half miles now back to the car park. So it's been a beautiful, I mean, just look at the weather here. It's just fabulous. There's still mountains. You can still see mountains, glimpse mountains through the trees. Let's see if I can get you. Just fabulous. Okay, I haven't met anybody on the trail this morning. So uh, I'm ex maybe expecting, no, maybe it's a bit late. Probably gonna be a bunch tomorrow though. Uh, this is Thursday, so yeah, I could have stayed another day. Well, if I'd have had enough food, but <laughs> it's just fabulous. And there would have been things I would have done different, but I would definitely have gone this way, Camp Lake Trail, and get the big elevation gain over with early on. It's a brute, it's relentless when you get up there and, uh, but you know, it's, it's definitely the way to go I think, is just get it over with on the first day and just, uh, you know, um, do target, target, backpacking, <laughs> pick a target, head for it, take a breather, pick a target, head for it. And once you've got that over and then the next next bit was the, the approach to Camp Lake was a little uh, little tricky but um, anyway it's there now and I'm on my way back to the car and I'm, hopefully I've got a cooler back at the car and I filled it with uh, ice and there's a cold hopefully there's still a cold beer in there so I'm gonna celebrate with one cold beer shouldn't be supposed to doing that but I'm gonna do it anyway okie dokie Onwards, onwards, to, and onwards and outwards. The trail's a bit gnarly along here. It might take me over an hour, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm.